Not to excite any New Zealanders, but I consider myself to be a sheep, meaning I'm adding another iceberg video to the millions that are already out there. I found a bunch of these animal themed icebergs, mostly of questionable origin, that list anything from obscure species to creepy or disturbing facts. And after looking at some of the biggest charts, I decided to pick some entries that I found most interesting, as well as adding some that I thought of as well, and combining them to make the ultimate animal iceberg. If you don't know how these iceberg charts work, Grow up. They're pretty fucking self-explanatory. If this is the first one you're ever seeing, I don't know what to tell you. Also, I'm not interested in fucking people around. Like, I'm not gonna have the first couple of tiers be some simple shit like cats or dogs. I'm actually gonna try to talk about some interesting shit in the hopes that the three people that watch this will actually learn something. Some of the entries towards the end of this list contain themes of animal abuse and may upset some of my three loyal viewers. I'll give a content warning before I talk about them. I, of course, do not condone any of the actions I will talk about. With that being said, a lot of the other entries are pretty interesting as well. Now, let's go over the ultimate animal facts iceberg. Nile Crocodile. I have personal beef with the Nile Crocodile. It's featured in this book that I had to study in year 7 called Pharaoh by Wilbur Smith, and I think it gave me AIDS. It was a fucking horrible introduction to middle school English, and on the top of having an absolute hag of a teacher named Brenda, caused me to severely dislike this thing. In the book, it mauls the main character's leg or something, and puts the whole plot into action. I could be remembering this all wrong, but my hatred for this fucking cunt of a book outweighs my care to fact check myself. Anyway, I should actually talk about it, huh? They unsurprisingly live in the Nile River in Africa, and are the causes of hundreds of human deaths each year. They're the second largest species of crocodile in the world behind Steve Owen's pets, the saltwater crocodiles, growing up to 5 meters or 16 feet long with some specimens weighing up to a ton. If we want to talk about an animal that I truly despise, we've got to talk about the killer whale. It's no secret of mine that I fucking hate these things, but before I go on my rant, I want to emphasize that I strongly believe the species should be protected and they definitely don't belong in captivity. With that being said, they're just assholes. They torture and kill anything they want from stingrays to sharks and dolphins. If you see a toddler killing small animals with no remorse, you don't think to yourself, oh, what a fascinating intelligent creature that knows its strength and place in its ecosystem. No, you fucking choke slam and stomp it before it comes a psychopath and kills people. Also known as the Sea World Slave, these things can go up to 8 meters or 26 feet long and weigh more than 6 tons. Sticking to the theme of etymology, which is a fancy way of saying how they were named, killer whales are actually a type of dolphin, and the word orca is suitably derived from Orcus, the Roman god of death. Green Anaconda the green anaconda is the world's largest snake, not the longest, we'll get to that one later, the largest. I say it all the time, but scientists are fucking stupid. I should know, I go to uni with a bunch of people who want to be them. And scientists measure size in weight instead of length and height. I get that it keeps uniformity amongst organisms, but when the blue whale is considered to be bigger than a sauropod, you know you fucked up. Sorry, we were talking about a snake. They can grow just over 5 meters or 16 feet long and weigh 250 kilos or 550 pounds. They're native to South America and eat pretty much anything, from caimans, which is like a shitty crocodile, to deer and sheep. They're nocturnal and aquatic, keeping their entire bodies underwater, except for their eyes and nose, waiting for a thirsty animal to come down to the water before crushing every bone in its fucking body and swallowing it whole. Adorable. Dodo. Everyone knows what a dodo is, but not everyone knows that they weren't completely brain dead. The idea that these things had the same intelligence as your average Jurassic World defender was derived from the dodo's lack of fear of humans. And why would they be scared? They had no natural predators and so therefore didn't have this instinct. They were native to the island of Mauritius and were last seen alive in 1662, having been wiped out in less than 100 years due to invasive species and humanity's relentless gluttony. Imagine being driven to extinction by people and being called a dumb fuck. Even worse, imagine having one of the worst service providers in Australia named after you. I'd be glad I was extinct, honestly. Trilobite. Trilobites are a weird group of aquatic bugs that lived for around 270 million years. That's a long fucking time for an organism to be alive for. There are over 25,000 known trilobite species that were all super varied, with some being able to swim, others being able to walk, and a couple even being able to go on land. They could be predators, scavengers, filter feeders, and esports gamers. They were also disgustingly big, with the largest species growing up to 70 centimeters or 28 inches long. They also survived a few mass extinction events before dying out completely towards the end of the Permian period 250 million years ago. Invincible tardigrades. Also known as water bears, these things are microscopic organisms that live fucking everywhere and, despite their name, have no relation at all to regular bears. I don't know, some fucking German scientist named them, take your complaints up with him. Most people think tardigrades are invincible, and they'd be almost correct. They're able to survive temperatures close to absolute zero, being shot from a gun, being stored in a freezer for 30 years, and in boiling water, but they're hunted and eaten by snails. Guess evolution didn't think that one through. Like, they live on wet moss and in the dirt. They don't need to be able to tank a fucking nuke. Tardigrades are known as extremophiles. N no, not that. Which are basically microscopic organisms that are able to live in the planet's most extreme environments that approach or surpass conditions that life is known to be able to adapt to. Also, apparently some psychopaths call them moss piglets. That's fucking vile. Liger. Ligers are a hybrid animal that's a mix between lions and tigers, specifically a male lion and a female tiger. If it's the other way around, you get a tigon for some reason. They're the largest of any known big cat species and also the fucking fattest, probably due to ligers having high rates of organ problems. The US has a good proportion of them too, so that's another potential reason. Unlike most hybrid organisms, ligers have actually unlocked sexual reproduction as part of their skill set, with a liger being born from a female liger in Russia in 2012. Breeding ligers is generally considered to be unethical, and animal rights activists campaign against it, and I'd have to agree, because they give off the same vibe as an American on a mobility scooter. Mayfly lifespan. 
Mayflies have the shortest lifespans of any animal on the planet, averaging around two days, with some species living for only five minutes. They spend their entire lives looking for a root, and, because they're around for mere seconds, have less success at reproduction than a League of Legends player. This is just their adult life stage though. They have a larval stage that can be anywhere from two weeks to two years. Reticulated Python the reticulated python is the longest snake species in the world, not the largest. We got to that one earlier. They go up to 6.5 meters or 21 feet long on average, with the largest recorded specimen growing up to 8.7 meters or 28 feet long. There are a bunch of other old reports of even longer and heavier specimens, but they're widely considered to be inaccurate. They live in South to Southeast Asia and have diets for quite literally everything. There's even reports on them eating motherfuckers. They're surprisingly good in the water too, having been recorded swimming far out at sea and between islands. Those are the major reason behind some of the worst Photoshop I've ever seen in my fucking life. Just look at some of this shit. Blobfish. Behind every cringe millennial spirit animal is actually a kind of sad story. The blobfish is a species of fish called a sculpin that lives super deep underwater. In its natural habitat, it looks pretty normal, but as it turns out, when you drag something from its home and subject it to devastating tissue damage as a result of rapid depressurization, you look like a weird sad freak. Who knew? The bald eagle. WHAT THE FUCK IS A KILOMETER?! You guys know it doesn't even sound like that? That's actually the call of a red-tailed hawk. They actually sound like pussies. Flamingos are not pink. Yeah, flamingos aren't pink. They're naturally this weird, dull grey colour that reminds me of slightly undercooked chicken. They get their colour from the brine shrimp that they eat. Basically, the shrimp eat microscopic algae that contain a pigment called a carotenoid, that when digested by the flamingo, turns their feathers pink. Animal group names. This is referring to words that you use to talk about groups of animals, like a flock of birds or a pod of dolphins. There are a bunch of funny ones, and I'll list a few of my favourites. A parliament of owls, a murder of crows, a blessing of narwhals, a crash of rhinos, a memory of elephants, a smack of jellyfish, a conspiracy of lemurs, and a prickle of hedgehogs. Megalodon. The megalodon is an extinct species of shark that was thought to have resembled a great white. Or the basking shark. Or the sand tiger? Yeah, scientists only have teeth to go off, so no one's really sure what it looks like. This is because shark bodies are made of cartilage, the same stuff as our ears, and that shit doesn't fossilize. They lived fucking everywhere and ate fucking everything, having significant impacts on marine communities worldwide. It's thought that the largest megalodons could grow up to 20 meters or 66 feet long and weigh over 100 tons, big enough to eat whales. Unlike great whites which attack their prey from underneath, a megalodon instead attacked from the side, crushing their prey and piercing their lungs and heart with its insane bite force. They must have been pretty good at fucking over whales, because there's a direct correlation between the megalodon's extinction and whales increasing in size and distribution. Distribution. Otters holding hands. Otters hold hands in a behavior known as rafting to keep from drifting away from each other while hunting or sleeping. Yeah, it's cute until you find out that male sea otters have developed a bad habit of humping baby seals to death in an attempt to reproduce and can continue humping the corpse for a week after. Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall is a primatologist and anthropologist, best known for her revolutionary work with primates in Africa in the 1960s. She was the first person to ever be accepted into a chimpanzee society and was the lowest ranking member of this troop for 22 months. I'd love to see those TikTok alpha males in this situation. I can't really do her justice here, but basically everything we know about primates like chimpanzees being similar to humans is because of her. Plus, a woman doing this in the 1960s was basically unheard of. Pac-Man Frog. I put this one on here literally just because of its name. It's also known as the South American Horned Frog. There's not a whole lot of information on them, but they live up to their names, apparently having voracious appetites. Geese Teeth Excluding orcas, the animals that I'm most scared of are definitely geese, and this is coming from someone who's done more than enough fucking around with the world's most venomous snakes. Geese have these horrifying looking serrations on the insides of their beaks that look and act like teeth, but because of the material they're made of, can't be classified as actual teeth. They're useful for pulling out roots, stems, and the eyes of small children. Shark Killing Statistics this is referring to the ratio of 100 million sharks being killed by humans every year, while only around 7 to 10 humans are killed by sharks every year. A statistic I love to bring up whenever the media, or anyone really, tries to demonize sharks and make them look like monsters. If they didn't have teeth and look scary sometimes, then I guarantee things would be different. To further my point, here are a few things that kill more people than sharks each year. Vending machines, cows, mosquitoes, freshwater snails, and dogs. Coconut crabs. Coconut crabs are probably one of the most overfeared animals ever. Sure, they might have eaten a famous pilot or two, but they're not that bad. They're the largest and strongest crustacean, having a pinch force more than 12 times stronger than a lobster's, or 5 times as strong as a human bite. They grow up to a meter in length and somehow only weigh like 5 kilos or 11 pounds. And yeah, you don't need to be scared of them because they're slow as fuck, and honestly, if they manage to jump you, you deserve whatever's coming. The most dangerous animal. This one's kind of misleading, but I really just wanted to talk about how hippos are one of the most dangerous animals on the planet. They're more aggressive than pit bulls in a preschool, and they're fucking massive and super strong, with sharp teeth that grow bigger than a ruler. Like, this is what their skulls look like. How is that even legal? They treat their habitats like open mic nights, except nothing wants to volunteer, and instead of performing a shitty comedy act, the hippo takes their life in the most violent way imaginable. Kind of reminds me of people who go to the ivy. Animals in space. There are a bunch of animals that have been shot into space with little to no regard for their safety or well-being, all for differing reasons. There was a fish species called a mummy chog, a bunch of ants, and an absolute fuck ton of monkeys, most of which fucking died. Benson the fish. 
Benton is a gigantic common carp and was once the largest freshwater fish in the UK, coming in at a massive 25 kilos or 60 pounds at her peak. Oh yeah, Benton's a girl. Yeah, I know, don't ask. She was very popular among fishermen, which in the wrong context, sounds weird, being caught 63 times in 13 years and was even dubbed Britain's biggest and best loved common carp. She was born in 1984 and died in 2009, and there's suspicion that someone killed her on purpose, but I personally think it's because she had to keep interacting with British people. Casper the Cat Casper was a male cat in England that got worldwide attention for catching public transport. He was a very explorative cat that would frequently get on the bus opposite to his owner's home, sit on his favourite seat, and take the round trip, with the bus drivers ensuring that Casper got off at his house. Weird scientific names. Scientific names have a tendency to be awful, like when a bird's name is Turtus Maximus, or when there's a group of beetles with the name Colon. But the worst and most horrifying one belongs to pigs. Dusty the Klepto Kitty. Dusty was a cat that was known for his kleptomania, otherwise known as an addiction to stealing. As of his appearance on The David Letterman Show in 2009, Dusty had stolen 16 car wash mitts, 7 sponges, 213 dish towels, 7 washcloths, 5 towels, 18 shoes, 73 socks, 100 gloves, 1 pair of mittens, 3 aprons, 40 balls, 4 pairs of underwear, 1 dog collar, 6 rubber toys, 1 blanket, 3 leg warmers, 2 frisbees, 1 golf club head cover, 1 safety mask, 2 mesh bags, 1 bag of water balloons, 1 pair of pajama pants, 8 bathing suits, and 8 other miscellaneous objects. Dick Dick. Fuck the Dick Dick. I said it before and I'll say it again. It's the world's most stompable antelope. I don't even know why I put it on this list, but it's not even worth removing because I want to make it feel bad again. It gets its name from a shitty fuck ass noise it makes. Fuck you, Dick Dick. Moving to the next level now, the entries here are all still pretty commonly known. There'll be less animal entries and more facts and biology things. Mosquitoes are the deadliest animal. How many times can I talk about the world's deadliest animal in the same list, right? I actually don't answer that. Mosquitoes kill more than 700,000 people per year. Obviously not on their own, but from the diseases they carry. Malaria being the main killer, especially in poorer communities where they don't have access to proper medical assistance. And it's as common in Africa as the cold is in developed countries like the US. Irukandji. Just like having 11 missed calls from your mum, the Irukandji jellyfish instills a sense of impending doom in its victims. This is known as Irukandji syndrome, which can cause cardiac arrest and be fatal. They're a rare species, but also one of the most deadly. Thankfully, they can be easily spotted in beaches in northern Australia, having a body up to half a centimetre in length and tentacles up to a metre long. Also, did I mention that they're basically invisible? Good fucking luck, I guess. Carcinization. Carcinization is a form of evolution where non-crab crustaceans evolve to become crabs, or at least something crab-shaped. It's thought by scientists that this body shape is more advantageous for survival, but, like, it surely isn't. I can't be the only one who's seen countless videos of crabs being tortured relentlessly. Who knew that being boiled alive and ripped apart was the best way to survive? Don't worry, though, it only happens to decapods like lobsters and shit. So humans won't be becoming crabs anytime soon. Cocaine hippos. Unfortunately, this isn't the next low-budget movie capitalizing off some weird internet meme. These cocaine hippos were actually owned by Pablo Escobar in Colombia during the 80s. Three females and one male were abandoned after old mate Pablo kicked the bucket in 1993, and have since bred and become an invasive species with 130 known individuals. This means that your chances of being attacked by a hippo in Colombia are low, but not impossible, and someone even hit and killed one in their car. How the fuck do you accidentally do that? Tasmanian Tiger the Tasmanian tiger or thylacine was a marsupial dog thing that went extinct in 1936. They were native to the incest-ridden Australian state of Tasmania, and those cousin fuckers hunted them to extinction and slapped them on a subpar beer brand. Marsupials are a group of animals that have pouches for carrying their offspring and a wide array of illegal weaponry, and thylacines are one of the largest known marsupial carnivores. What's weird is that both sexes had pouches when it's usually only females that have them. Males literally just use them for cock protection. They could open their jaws super wide and their closest living relative is the Tasmanian devil. It's thought that the Tasmanian tiger once lived in the mainland of Australia, but were team marked by dingoes when the indigenous people moved here 10 of thousands of years ago. The entire genome of thylacines has been preserved, and there's actually been efforts to clone them. I just hope they remove the dick pouch. Mongolian Death Worm The Mongolian Death Worm is a creature that apparently exists in the Gobi Desert. This rumor is probably the most interesting thing to come out of Mongolia other than my homie Badman, Buggin. It's been described as two feet long and so highly poisonous that touching it means instant death. First off, it's clearly not fucking real and looks like a dick that's been beaten too many times. And secondly, if you touch it and die, that makes it venomous, not poisonous. Beached Whales Minor content warning, skip here if you don't know what happens to whales when they're beached too long. Whales beaching themselves highlights the obsolescence of strictly aquatic body types. Maybe they should just become crabs like everything else. Cetacean stranding has been happening since before recorded history, and because you can't just go up to a whale and ask why it's not in the fucking water anymore, it's theorized to be for a couple of reasons. It could be due to issues with echolocation or geomagnetic disturbances, either of which possibly being influenced by underwater sonar. Beaching doesn't have a massive impact on any species populations, unless you're standing right next to one when it explodes violently due to gas buildup. That might reduce a population by one. Speculative zoology. Speculative zoology refers to a subgenre of hard science fiction in which artists make educated guesses as to what organisms could evolve to look like in the future. This mostly results in horrible drawings that slightly differ from already existing animals, but it's a fun concept for about 30 seconds. Stink bird. 
Stink birds, otherwise known as a hoatzin, has a digestive system that ferments the swamp plants that it eats, making its shit smell fucking terrible. It's been described as smelling like cow manure, which isn't too bad until you think about the fact that it came out of a bird's ass. The natives of the upper parts of South America and are apparently very noisy. Penis snake. I'm not talking about this one for long because it looks vile and I don't want to keep looking for footage. It's just a legless amphibian that lives in Brazilian rainforests. You know, for $20 I'm a Greenland shark. The Greenland shark, also known as a sleeper shark, has the longest known lifespan of any known vertebrate species, with an estimated lifespan of 250 to 500 years. The Greenland shark grows up to 7 meters or 23 feet long and inhabits the North Atlantic and Arctic oceans, and, I guess due to their age, have a permanent lead stare. Melanism. Melanism is a condition defined as an increased amount of dark pigment in the fur or skin of an animal. The most notable real-world example of this are melanistic leopards, otherwise known as panthers, but there are also reports of dope-looking melanistic tigers that exist. Flemin response. You know when a cat smells something and pulls away with a horrified expression on its face? That's called the Fleming response, and it's due to the presence of something called a Jacobson's organ, which allows animals to smell through their mouths as well as their noses. It's widely known that snakes have this ability, but so do many other animals, including horses and dogs. Also, quick side note, have you ever wondered why snakes and some lizards like the Komodo dragon have forked tongues? They basically use it like a compass for smell. Each side of the tongue can be stimulated separately at different levels. For example, if the right side picks up more smell than the left, the snake knows that whatever it's tracking is further to the right, and balancing the stimulation of both forks means the snake is looking in the direction of its target. Socotra. Socotra is an island in the Republic of Yemen that has a fuck ton of distinct flora and fauna, with 90% of its species being endemic to the island. Endemic meaning that the species is console exclusive and aren't found anywhere else. It's thought that this level of endemism is because the island's hostile environment and high crime rates forced its organisms to evolve and adapt. I don't know why, but Yemen kind of reminds me of those Winston with a Y ads, but I imagine instead of Winston, it's semen. <laughs> yeah, forget I said anything. Wombat poo cubes. Wombat shit cubes because of weird muscle contractions in their asses. That's it. Not all these entries are going to be super detailed. Healer monster. Healer monsters are one of two known venomous lizards on the planet, the other being Komodo dragons. I feel like their names need to be swapped. This is much more of a monster than this little bubba. And if you want to argue the dragon listing is weird, remember that bearded dragons exist, and they're pretty small. It's native to the United States, and for some reason has a fearsome reputation, which makes just as much sense as banning kinder eggs. Like, they're not even that big, and they're slow as fuck. Maybe I'm just too Australian. Alligator snapping turtle. Alligator snapping turtles aren't even that bad. Their bite force is strong enough to cut your fingers or sexual appendages clean off. They can weigh up to 80 kilos or 175 pounds, with the largest recorded specimen weighing 180 kilos or 400 pounds. Although that was in the 1930s. And if you know the 1930s like I do, he can be a lying piece of shit sometimes. They're opportunistic predators, remaining completely still, waiting for anything dumb enough to not see the giant fucking turtle and swim straight towards its mouth. They're not known to attack humans often, but how else will we know that they can bite off fingers? Nijasaurus. No. Jaguars eat everything. Jaguars are the true definition of apex predators. There isn't a single thing in their environment that they can't murder and devour. Anything from capybaras, sorry cringe millennials, to fucking crocodiles are susceptible to these feline tanks. They have the strongest bite forces of any big cat, being able to pierce the shells of turtles and tortoises. Their bite is so strong in fact that they sometimes don't even bother going for their prey's neck like other big cats, instead opting to humanely crush their skulls. Leopard strength. For their size, leopards are scarily strong. They're the smallest species of big cat, and full-grown leopards are able to drag carcasses up to three times their body weight into trees for later storage. And look out if you're under trees in Africa, because you might get jumped by a half-eaten antelope. On average, leopards weigh around 45 to 50 kilos, or 100 to 110 pounds. So these feats are actually super impressive. They can also run up to 58 kilometers or 36 miles an hour, and jump more than three meters or 10 feet straight up to catch birds. Oh yeah, they're also good swimmers. I hope I never encounter these motherfuckers in the wild. I'd get fucking bummed in a second. Atlas moth. Atlas moths are one of the world's biggest moth species and are well known for being that one fuck ass bug that won't leave your room when you're trying to sleep. They can have wingspans of up to 24 centimeters or 10 inches long and are native to forests in Southeast Asia. Their wings act as a deterrent for anything trying to murder them, having an uncanny resemblance to snakeheads on the tips of its wings. This is a somewhat common defense mechanism in butterflies and moths, where bright colors and eye shaped patterns make potential predators shit themselves and run away. Because moths are fucking stupid, there's no way they actively try to look like snakes, and this is a result of fine tuning these traits by evolution. Animals in zero gravity. I already kind of spoke about this one before, but this is less about shooting animals into space just cause, and more about animals' reactions to being in zero gravity. There's not really a point in me explaining it, so I'll just put a few clips together in the style of those shitty, annoying compilation videos. You know the ones. Oh, I've already had enough of this. Domination. Swell Shark. The swell shark is a species of cat shark that's basically just a bigger, carnivorous puffer fish, having the ability to double its size when threatened. They do this by biting their tail and sucking in water or air stored in the stomach. They make a barking noise when releasing this water or air, and also glow in the dark, meaning they'd probably be popular at kids' discos. Epaulette shark. 
The Apple shark follows the trend of cat shark species having superpowers by being able to fucking walk and survive for two hours out of the water. They can do this because of- yeah, I'm not reading that. They're supposedly the best species of shark to buy as a pet, and I want one. Thankfully, I make a lot of money from doing these fucking videos and can afford it. There's been reports of these things chilling like 30 meters inland and then nocturnal. So if you live around the northern Australian or southern Papua New Guinea coastlines, look out for these guys. Unless you're a super successful YouTuber like me who can just buy one. Honeypot ant. Honeypot ants are ants, just with a cheeky twist. They love vor, or inflation, or something. I don't know, I'm not well versed when it comes to kinks. The colonies have specialized workers, suitably called rotunds, that gorge themselves with food until they look like that one bitch from that one movie I can't be asked to look up. They're able to grow to the size of a grape and in the wild can't move because of how obese they are. I guess it's not a strictly human problem. Jackalope. Jackalopes are fictional creatures that resemble rabbits with antlers. The only interesting thing about them is that they're listed as a fearsome critter, but I think the word fearsome should be left for things that you can't demolish with a single kick. Sega antelope. Fucking ugly art. Getting deeper now, at this level of creepy looking animals, or animals that have weird abilities. I don't really know what to say for these mini intro things, it just feels weird to say nothing and then move on. Globster. Globster is a name given to unidentified organic masses that wash up on the shorelines of oceans or other bodies of water. The term was coined by some dude named Ivan to describe something called the Tasmanian carcass of the 1960s. He described it as having no visible eyes, no defined head, and no apparent bone structure. Many globsters resemble gigantic octopi, but later turned out to be carcasses of whales, large sharks, and American tourists. Horned Lizard don't bother watching this terrible fucking show when you can just look at the horned lizard instead. The horned lizard has an extremely unique defense mechanism where it shoots its own fucking blood from its eyes. It deters predators like cats and dogs because of its foul taste, but not birds for some reason. I guess birds are fucking stupid anyway. Lungfish. As the name implies, lungfish are able to breathe air as well as water. They're a sort of halfway point between fish and tetrapods, which are basically everything else that live on land. Most of them are fucking dead too, with there being only like six known species, and they're all pussies too, living in sissy boy fresh water instead of real man salt water. All the different species have different passive abilities. Some are able to walk, others just flop weirdly on land, some burrow, and some can live for a year out of the water. But sadly, none will ever know the loving touch of a woman. Giant insects. Just like everything in prehistoric times, insects used to be fucking massive. This is probably due to the air back then having fucking steroids in it, because how else would dragonflies and shit be big enough to compete in national bodybuilding championships? The most horrifying of these oversized arthropods was Arthropleura, a millipede that grew up to 2.5 meters or 8 feet long and half a meter or 20 inches wide. It probably ate normal millipede shit like spores and plants, but I guarantee if they were around, they'd find a way into my fucking house and I'd be forced to fight them to the death. Shelter Pussick. The shelter pussyk is also known as Pallas' glass lizard. I'm sure it being a lizard and not a snake confuses a lot of you, so I'll explain. Someone decided that the criteria for a reptile to be considered a lizard did not include having legs. For something to be a lizard, it has to have eyelids, ear holes, and a fleshy tongue, because lizards love to eat pussy. They can grow up to 135 centimeters or four and a half feet long and look like they were drawn by someone who had heard of a snake but never seen one. Auto hemorrhaging. Auto hemorrhaging or reflex bleeding is the process of ejecting your own fucking blood out of your body on purpose. We talked about this one with a horned lizard, but there's a bunch of other psycho animals that do this too. Several bugs and a few snakes also have this ability. It has two forms, the first being the one we already talked about, where the blood is actually shot from the animal. In this case, the blood is usually toxic, making it a chemical defense mechanism as well as just being kinda gross. And the second is where the blood slowly seeps out, similarly to that one guy left in a ditch in late 2009. This is more common in the bugs and is used as a deterrent instead of a chemical defense. Which is weird, because if it's gonna be eaten, you'd assume that the predator wouldn't care about the blood, but what do I know? I'm not a dumbass animal. Okay, Maybe just the dumbass part. Laika. Laika was a random street dog that was shot into space as part of the early Soviet space program. She was one of the first animals to ever reach space and the first to actually orbit the Earth. As the technology to get a spacecraft out of orbit wasn't actually developed yet, she was basically expected to die. And oh golly did she meet those expectations, crapping out from overheating on her fourth orbit only hours into the flight aboard the Sputnik 2. She had a monument built for her in the early 2000s and inspired the movie Space Bud, I, I think. Dolly the Sheep. Dolly's a sheep that was the first mammal to ever be cloned. Not the first animal, but the first mammal. Cloning is exactly what you think. She was genetically identical to another sheep. Her existence proved that cloning was possible from mature cells and specific body parts. Dolly was created using a cell from a mammary gland, or more simply, a sheep titty. Her cloning led to widespread advancements in stem cell research. She was born in 1996 and died in 2003 via euthanasia due to a progressive lung disease unrelated to her cloning and had several lambs throughout her lifetime. Giant Vinegaroon. Hey, that's the thing from Harry Potter! It's exactly what I thought when looking this thing up. It's called the Giant Vinegaroon, known hilariously as Grampus, and less hilariously as the Giant Whip Scorpion. They can spray a substance from their tail that smells strongly of vinegar, giving them their name. They grow to about 60 millimeters or two and a half inches long and are kept as pets by wizard professors and fucking psychopaths. Headless Chickens Chickens are able to live amazing amounts of time without their fucking heads. One chicken named Miracle Mike lived to 18 months running around like a, um, a... 
Uh, now, this is in 1945, so take this with criminal amounts of salt, but apparently when a chicken's head is chopped off, seven nerves can still send impulses to the muscles of the legs and wings, which make the bird run around and flap. Mike was able to survive being decapitated because the axe that attempted to murder him missed his brainstem, meaning his heart could still remain beating and his lungs could remain breathing. He was fed liquid food dropped into his esophagus for the entire time he was toured around the country. Personally, I don't believe this story at all, because the chicken would have most likely bled out, and given the time period, so much else could have gone wrong with diseases and the like. But it's a somewhat common piece of animal trivia, so I decided to include it. Hallucinogenic fish. A bunch of fish species are known to produce hallucinogenic effects similar to LSD when consumed. An example being a species of sea brim, Sarpa salpa, which is found around the Mediterranean and Spain, as well as the west and south coasts of Africa. Don't go rushing for a euphoric and life-changing experience in the ocean, though. As the effects are more delirious than euphoric, or for non-drug familiar people, the experience is more likely to make you shit your pants than come in them. Just ask the two dudes that ate them in 2006 and tripped for several days. The length of the trip is supposedly affected by the season, and it's thought to be caused by toxins associated with algae that grow in the flesh of the fish. Maybe in a future video I'll test this and meet a demon or something. Crocodiles climbing trees. If you thought that escaping crocodiles was hard enough, some of them climb trees. Scientists have observed four different species in Australia, Africa, and America all climbing and basking in trees. Apparently, the crocodiles become pussies upon contact with the plants, being reported as skittish when approached for further observation. So instead of being scared from crocodiles killing you from trees, you can be assured that they'll kill you from the water instead. Starfish digestion. Starfish digestion is pretty foul, but considering some of the shit that goes on in the ocean, it's not too bad. They basically invert their stomachs and push them out of their mouths to dissolve whatever they're trying to eat before they actually eat it. Eyelash mites. There are mites that live on eyelashes that eat your dead skin cells. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to bother going into the symptoms, and there's not much about them other than how to treat them, so I'm just going to move on. Cookie cutter shark. Cookie cutter sharks are the first of several ocean creatures that we'll cover on this list that are straight out of a fucking horror movie. They look like a combination of wrinkly foreskin and a poo with a mouth of razor sharp teeth. This thing gets its name from their distinctive method of feeding, that being gouging round plugs out of larger prey as if they were using a cookie cutter that look absolutely brutal. They grow to about half a meter or 22 inches in length and are found between 3 to 3.7 kilometers or 1.9 to 2.3 miles underwater, usually near islands. It tortures its supposed prey by using light emitting spots on its underside to lure in potential predators before quickly latching onto their victim. Why the fuck were they ever featured on the Octonauts? This belongs in Resident Evil not a fucking kids show. Mega Mouth Shark. Sticking with the theme of horrifying nightmare sharks, we have the Mega Mouth, creatively named due to its giant fucking gob. They're a deep water shark, very rarely seen by humans, that measures 5.2 meters or 17 feet long. It's a filter feeder, which means they swim slowly while holding their mouths wide open in the hopes that anything dumb enough won't notice the giant fucking beast about to end their measly existence. The diet consists of plankton and jellyfish, both of which aren't the brightest, so this adds up. They're found pretty much anywhere about a kilometer or 3,000 feet deep underwater and are often mistaken for baby orcas. Leaf Sheep. Even though this thing is nothing like a sheep, I'm actually okay with it being called the leaf sheep. Not like other dumb names like the water bear. That's what happens when you get discovered by the Japanese instead of the Germans, I guess. They're a species of sea slug that grows to only a centimeter in length and are able to photosynthesize like plants due to a process called kleptoplasty. And that's kind of all we know. Goliath bird eater. Making my spider video on TikTok really showed me how many people are fucking terrified of spiders. So if you're one of those people, I implore you skip this part. Unless you really feel like shitting yourself, then keep watching. The Goliath bird eater is the largest spider in the world by mass. They can have leg spans of up to 30 centimeters or 12 inches and body lengths of 13 centimeters or 5.1 inches, meaning they're double the size of the average penis length. Despite the names, the spiders rarely hunt birds, but the fact that it eats them at all is awful enough. They actually eat pretty much anything else though, from bugs, amphibians, and even small vertebrates. By rubbing their asses, they're able to release hairs that are extremely irritating when coming into contact with skin, even for humans. Their fangs are big enough to pierce human skin, and while they have venom, it's relatively harmless, comparable to that of a wasp sting. Surprisingly, they don't live in Australia, but don't worry too much if you live in South America, because they're nocturnal and highly aggressive. Manta Ray Intelligence Manta rays are thought to be the most intelligent fish species, which pisses me off. The intelligence thing is totally fine, but when this is classified as a lizard and not a snake, how can this underwater pancake can't be called a fish when it's clearly something else? But whatever, some dumbass scientist put a mirror in front of the fish, and they were actually able to recognize themselves. Or at least scientists think they can. They stare at themselves for long periods of time and move around those weird flaps near their mouths much more than usual. They also do this thing when interacting with each other where they intensify the coloration on their backs, and when looking in a mirror, they don't do this, implying that they can recognize themselves. This is in contrast with other animals, who either ignore or violently attack the mirror, either because they see their reflection as a rival, or because they have a severe distaste for Eustace von Lieberg. He invented the mirror. Rays being able to recognize their reflections in mirrors is a sign of self-awareness. Great apes and bottlenose dolphins could do this too, but they also have massive brains in relation to their bodies, which feels like a much better measure of of intelligence than self-observation. Potu. The potu is the world's ugliest bird. Every photo of this thing looks horrific in a different way. They live in Central and South America and are sometimes called poor me ones after their haunting calls. First off, what the fuck does poor me one have anything to do with a haunting call? And secondly, their call is just a normal bird sound, so what the fuck? They're a strictly nocturnal bird that camouflages super well as a tree stump during the day. They mostly eat insects by swallowing them whole with their gaping mouths, and one was even found to have swallowed a small bird. I don't know why people are so defensive when I rip on this thing. It's really not that interesting. Brood parasites. 
Brood parasitism is the laziest form of parenting. It's a natural phenomenon where an animal will lay an egg in the nest of a different species with the aim to have their offspring raised for them. This behavior is found in birds, fish, and insects and benefits the parasite's parent by allowing them to focus on finding food for themselves or having other offspring by letting another species raise their child for them, often to the other species' demise. It's basically forced adoption, but instead of being given a normal human child, you're given a mukbang YouTuber that always carries a loaded firearm. But why do parent animals bother raising another species' offspring? This can be for a couple reasons. One of the main ones, especially in birds, is that the parasitic eggs look almost the exact same as their own. The other, and my favorite reason, is something called the mafia hypothesis. This theory suggests that the parasite parent will fucking destroy the nests and or kill the offspring of any other species that rejects the parasitic eggs, basically forcing the parent to exhaust themselves in raising the parasite child. And to make it worse, sometimes the parasite child fucking kills the original offspring anyway. Sea cucumbers eject their organs. Sea cucumbers shit out their organs as a defense mechanism against predators like fish and crabs in a method called evisceration. They then later regenerate these organs within a couple of days. This is supposed to deter predators from eating it, but like I said with the blood ejection shit, the predator knows what it's getting into beforehand, so why even bother? Wojtek the bear. Wojtek was a bear adopted by Polish soldiers during World War II and was eventually promoted to corporal in the army in order to provide him with rations and transportation. He was apparently a celebrity with allied generals and statesmen. He was purchased at a train station in Iran in 1942 and helped the soldiers carry crates of ammunition during battles until the end of the war when he was gifted to Edinburgh Zoo in Scotland. Tasmanian Devil Bite Force Tasmanian devils have an extremely strong bite force for their size. If they were scaled up to the size of a spotted hyena, which has the strongest bite force of any land animal, the devil would have a bite force similar to a great white. Maned Wolf the main dwarf is false advertising because it's not actually a type of wolf. It's also not a fox either, but its own weird group that I can't pronounce, but it translates to golden dog. They live in South America and grow to be just over a meter or 43 inches tall. This is thanks to their long ass legs that remind me too much of Garfield Creepypasta that help them to see over tall grass while hunting. They also make one of the most terrifying noises in the animal kingdom. Oh yeah, and apparently their piss smells like weed. Again, I don't know what to fucking say here, but it just feels empty otherwise. I was gonna say this tier is shorter than the others, but I just checked and it, it's not at all. Babarusa. The Babarusa has a hard cap on how long it can live for in the wild. They're these ugly ass pigs with these ugly ass horns, which are actually teeth, that given the animal lives long enough, can grow long enough that they curve around and pierce their own fucking skulls. Also known as deer pigs, they're found in some random Indonesian islands and they can fucking stay there as far as I'm concerned. They've inspired the creation of demonic masks and for some reason they're considered important enough by the Jewish and Muslim communities for them to have debates on whether or not they should count as pork and would therefore be edible. Unlike these religions, however, I don't consider the Babarusa worth my time and I'm gonna stop talking about it now. Dinosaur Shrimp. The dinosaur shrimp is actually not a species of shrimp. God, the word shrimp really pisses off my Australian brain. This has been a somewhat common theme throughout this list. Just animals having names that have nothing to do with their actual species. They're basically a miniature horseshoe crab. And if you don't know what those are, they look like this. They're very small, only growing around three inches in length, and they like to chill in freshwater ponds and pools, often where no higher life forms exist. This means that they have superiority complexes and follow in the teachings of that one German guy with the mustache in the 1940s. Cockroach marriage. Some Japanese guy married a cockroach. He's 25 years old and his name is Yuto Shinohara. He dated a cockroach from Africa for a year before it died, which is weird because I thought Asian cultures frowned upon interracial dating. He claims the relationship was strictly platonic, but he did say he fantasized about the cockroach, either it growing big or him shrinking down. Anyway, he could fuck the bug worked. Oh, and if this wasn't weird enough, he ate it when it died so it will live on through him. Also, fuck this article for wanting me to subscribe to them so I can read the rest of it. They literally ripped this from a YouTube video. Journalism of courage, my fucking ass. Or fish. This is another one for my Thalassophobia enthusiasts. The oarfish is a pelagic lampreform fish belonging to the family Regalcidae, or in English, they're the longest bony fish in the world. Bony fish, by the way, basically just means that it's not a shark. Also, remember that longest doesn't mean largest. Fucking scientists. These things grow up to 11 meters or 36 feet in length and can live anywhere from 250 to 1,000 meters or 660 to 3,300 feet deep. They're rarely seen on the surface, not only because that's what I like and they're giant pussies and don't want to fight me, but also because they fucking die from depressurization. Also, there aren't any currents down where they live, so they have less muscle mass than this guy and get dicked on by the turbulent surface waves. Told you they were fucking pussies. Due to their size and general horrific appearance, sightings of them are thought to have inspired sea serpent tales among fucking dumb cunts in the past. They constantly have the expression of someone who just saw their dog fucking their granddad and they swim in a super weird way where they only move their long ass fin while keeping their bodies completely still. Spider silk goats. Have you ever tried to milk a spider? I actually don't answer that. Because it turns out it's pretty difficult, especially given the tiny amount of silk that you actually get. Well, a couple of psychos over at BioSteel decided they'd had enough of spider titties and made these genetically modified goats that could produce spider silk instead of regular, disgusting goat milk. I don't know how this was done. I'm not a geneticist, but they basically inserted a gene from the golden orb weaver spider that allows them to make silk and put it into a goat. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say spoilers for Spider-Verse 3. Dog breed deformities. A lot of your favorite dog breeds are constantly on their fucking deathbeds thanks to humans making them fuck their relatives and giving them life-threatening deformities. The fact that a Chihuahua and a Great Dane can fuck when a bear and a wombat can't should say enough. Bulldogs are one of the worst offenders here, or rather the worst victims, having several bone issues and joint dysplasia and skin diseases, and not to mention they can't fucking breathe as soon as it gets slightly too hot for them. Pugs and French Bulldogs have the same breathing issues, King Charles Cavalier's hearts stop working as soon as they turn 5 years old, and don't get me started on corgis. If you want to know more about this, Salmonelle did a video on it, so go watch him instead. 
cordyceps. Anyone who's played or watched The Last of Us knows about cordyceps, but for those who have a life, I'll quickly explain. It's a parasitic fungus that basically creates zombies, taking over the brains of its victims and causing them to move to areas more favorable for the fungi's growth. It starts with its spores attaching and absorbing into an ant's exoskeleton, where it lies dormant for a while before bioactive compounds interfere with the ant's brain and cause it to wander off from its colony. The ant will move to a suitable area where it will find a vantage point on a tree, around 10 inches from the ground, and latch onto the bark with its pincers. This will be its final resting place. The fungus feeds on the ant's innards before sending a stem through the ant's fucking head, turning its corpse into a launch pad to release more spores, and the cycle continues. Continues. Apparently, if eaten by humans, it provides amazing benefits for the brain, boosts immunity, and can even improve sexual dysfunction. I don't trust any of this for a fucking second, and the people advertising this are probably infected too. Benefits for the brain? Oh, you mean being made into a zombie? Boosting immunity? Can't catch diseases when you're dead? Oh, improving sexual dysfunction? Where can I buy this? Megalania. Megalania is a giant monitor lizard that used to live in Australia, because it wouldn't really be Australia without giant fucking reptiles. They can grow up to 7 meters or 23 feet long and weigh almost 2 tons. They're essentially a giant Komodo dragon, which adds up because Megalania is the largest known terrestrial lizard. It probably ate fucking everything in its environment, from giant wombat things called Diprotodon and probably even people. Yeah, indigenous Australians have to deal with these motherfuckers. They're incredibly powerful limbs and razor sharp teeth. It could also run at speed similar to today's crocodiles, which isn't fast, but this thing is way scarier. It likely wouldn't have needed to run for long distances either, because, like Komodo dragons, they were venomous. And as long as they got one bite onto their prey, it didn't matter if they escaped, because it'd be dead when Megalania found it again. Thylacolio. Speaking of horrifying Australian megafauna, we have Thylacolio, also known as the Australian Lion. They're essentially a larger version of the Tasmanian Tiger, having similar sizes to that of African lionesses. They had massive canines like saber-toothed tigers and had the strongest bite force of any known mammal species. Just like the Megalania, they ate fucking everything, and again, that probably includes humans. They're thought to have had an extremely efficient and unique bite, where it would use its massive teeth to crush the windpipe, sever the spinal cord, and destroy the major blood vessels of its prey before getting its penis out and ejaculating all over its prey to assert dominance. Although I couldn't find any evidence about that last part. Helicoprion. Helicoprion is just Subnautica concept art gone too far. It's not a shark, as many people may initially think, but actually a type of chimera, which are the ugliest things known to man. I've already talked about this thing on TikTok, so I won't go into detail on this one because everything I say is gospel and I need not repeat it. They're shockingly big, growing to around 8 meters or 26 feet in length, and, like sharks, their bodies are made of cartilage, so scientists had a fucking nightmare trying to get those measurements, especially because Helicoprion's teeth were nothing like anything anyone had ever seen. This also led to some hilarious depictions, but in reality, it probably looked really boring. Wolverine Frog the things that make the wolverine frog unique are genuinely disgusting. Not only do the males have hair-like structures on their fucking legs, but they also have a sort of retractable claw. But it's not actually a claw. It's their fucking bones that they break purposefully and shove through their skin, and they have no way of retracting them manually. But when the gashes heal, the bones fuse back together. Fuck this thing. Agar train system. In a growing attempt for the corporate elite to not have to pay their workers, Japanese engineers hired a slime mold to help them design their subway system. This was done in an attempt to maximize the efficiency of their public transport. Basically, the agar, or mold, would find the shortest and most efficient path between two areas, as marked by oat flakes, and after placing obstacles around, representing areas where the workers couldn't build tracks, the mold would grow to the food. Apparently, the mold nearly perfectly matched the already existing rail system, which isn't surprising given how fucking amazing Japan's public transport is. Platybelodon. Bloody Belladon's got a weird hat on it. It's an ancestor of modern elephants and had these gross flat teeth things. We pretty much know nothing about it other than it might have used its shovel shaped jaw to dig for food. Or cut branches off trees. Or as weaponry. Yeah, actually, you know what? We don't know anything about it. Argentavis. Argentavis is the biggest bird to have ever existed, but that's in weight. The longest wingspan goes to Pelagornis. That being said, it's still fucking gigantic, resembling a vulture or a condor, except with a 6.5 meter or 26 foot wingspan. And in typical bird fashion, it only weighed like 70 kilos or 160 pounds. This is actually pretty heavy for a bird, so flapping its wings to keep itself in the air was a difficult task, which is why they mostly jumped off mountains or hillsides and glided everywhere, only flapping occasionally. They would do this by surveying their territory for unsuspecting prey to fucking swallow a hole without even touching the ground. They also probably ate carcasses when they could, but that was at the risk of being gangbanged by the flightless terror birds. Ant to human ratio. There are a fuck ton of ants in the world, and most of them are going to converge in your kitchen five seconds after you leave food unattended. The ant to human ratio is about 2.5 million to 1, with there being an estimated 20 quadrillion ants in the world. This means that if the ants were to come together as one and revolt against the human overlords, we'd probably get fucked over, but they're currently too distracted with scraps of food in kitchens. Squirrels see in slow motion. This scene from Over the Hedge has not only been ripped off by other studios, but it's actually closer to reality than you might think. It's thought that smaller creatures like squirrels and hummingbirds perceive time slower because they're always at the risk of being murdered. Thanks to an experiment involving a light that I can't be fucked to explain, we now know that these animals basically see in slow motion, and that there's a correlation between animals' metabolism and time perception. That being, the faster the metabolism, the slower time seem to them. But it's still no match for the power of the military-industrial complex. Useless animals. Mantis Shrimp Punch Mantis shrimp has the strongest punch in the animal kingdom. They hit almost as hard as a drunken father, at speeds of almost 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour, delivering the same force as a 22 caliber bullet. Their punches are so strong, in fact, that they superheat the water around them to temperatures nearly equivalent to the surface of the sun. They can do this not because they have massive muscles, but because their arms are essentially spring-loaded, which allow for insane explosive strength. They use these punches to dismember or just fucking kill their prey, which can range from crabs to squid and fish. Kandiru fish. 
Candira fish is best known for its ability to hide in the urethra of humans, also known as your fucking piss tube. While this is apparently untrue and there hasn't been conclusive evidence of this, they do drink blood from other fish. Drepanaspus. Drepanaspus is a species of armored jawless fish that lived fucking ages ago. They're built like a fucking snow shovel and only grew to like 30 centimeters or 12 inches long. So I guess they're built more like spoons. They've thought to have lived similar lifestyles to modern day rays, roaming around on the bottom of the ocean floor looking for whatever they can fit into their fucking gob. They died out around 400 million years ago, and anything that's that old has similar features to modern day organisms, but a bit shit. They had a sensory system, but it was undeveloped. They had teeth for chewing, but not really, and so on. Not like Anomalocaris, which has a bunch of extremely unique adaptations and is one of the earliest examples of an apex predator. These unique adaptations include as disc-shaped mouth, frontal appendages, and trunk, all of which were thought to be different organisms when initially discovered. They also had things called compound eyes, which are super common half a fucking billion years ago, and were a really basic early version of what we know as eyes today. They were closer to rocks than anything organic, and it's this closeness to Mr. Johnson that allowed them to fossilize. Also, for their time, they were massive, growing up to 37 centimeters or 1.2 feet long. They're thought to have been the reason behind the Amber Alert, being one of the first hunting predators to ever exist. There's a lot of other interesting shit on this thing, and I'll probably have to leave it for another TikTok if they don't ban me, because this video is already half an hour long, and there's still a bunch more shit to cover. Hallucigenia. Hallucigenia is a worm with spiky legs that was fucking tiny, only around 5 centimeters or 2 inches long. There is quite literally fuck all we know about it because the holotype, also known as the only specimens known to man, are markings in a fucking rock that look like they were drawn by infants. It leaves me wondering how they found this thing if it's 5 centimeters long in this massive rock formation, but who knows when it comes to scientists. Colossal squid. The rather uncreatively named Colossal Squid is a larger version of the Giant Squid, but the Colossal Squid is sometimes called the Giant Squid, because fuck you I guess. They grow up to 14 meters or 45 feet long and weigh 700 kilos or 1500 pounds, although these are based off their beaks found inside of sperm whales. How the fuck they retrieved that I have no idea. Maybe one dumb cunt whale beached itself and blew its fucking guts up and the beak went with it. They have the largest eyes in the animal kingdom as well, growing to well over the size of a dinner plate and have these huge bulbous mantles that look like a dog penis. Ain't no way I'm looking that up to prove it, but if you know, you know. They live super deep underwater around Antarctica and New Zealand, and since no one lives in those places, encounters are rare, and as such, recent Research is limited. So pretty much everything we know is based on a couple of captured specimens or inferred from giant squids. One thing we do know is that they're constantly fighting for their lives against hordes of ravenous cum whales. The Garanook. Why do I keep putting ugly ass gazelles at the end of these tears? I don't want to fucking talk about them, they're fucking grim! <laughs> okay, this is where the tears get shorter. It's good for me because it means I'll be done quicker, and it's good for you because it means I'll stop fucking yapping soon. A lot more of these will be shorter too, mostly because obscure animals are just that. Obscure, and there's not much information on them. Wolf eel decapitation. I'm not sure how someone discovered this, but the wolf eel, which is known for being able to easily crush sea urchins and the shells of crustaceans, can still bite with its head cut off. This is probably just a reaction from the fish's nerve endings, similar to when you stomp the absolute fuck out of a bug and it's still moving. Oh yeah, and it's not an eel, it's a fish. Real life skeleton horse. We get a few comments like this whenever we post about Buddy. It is our job to take care of- Chimpanzee strength. Chimpanzees are way stronger than they look. I'm sure everyone's heard the horrific stories about them mauling people, but did you know they're strong enough to crush every bone in your arm just by holding you too tightly? They're thought to have the strength of five men, but actual scientific estimates suggest it's a more modest one and a half men. What makes them so dangerous is actually their intelligence. I know from my volunteer work at Taronga that chimpanzees are considered to be the most dangerous animal in the zoo, and face-to-face -face interactions between animal and keeper without barriers are almost strictly prohibited. There was even a story of a chimp trying to unlock a door to the enclosure with a stick after having seen the keeper do the same with a key. Do not fuck with these things. Big fin squid. Everyone's seen this picture at the point. Uh, oh, the Lassophobia warning as well. Sorry. It's called the Big Fin Squid, and they can go up to 8 meters or 26 feet in length. They're a part of a group that are the deepest living squid species, with sightings as deep as 6,200 meters or 20,000 feet underwater. The only way we've been able to see these things is with submarines. I can only imagine the line for the shit bucket on board after the first sighting of this thing. Sarcastic fringe head. Along with having a terrible name, they're extremely aggressive. And just like frat guys after two beers, are kind of fucking homosexual about it. Because during territorial battles, two competing males will press their wide-ass mouths together and make out, only stopping when one is able to bite the other's head and determine who the bigger fish is. Also, the mouths kind of look like the demigorgon from normal objects. Damascus goat. When a mother goat chain smokes crystal meth during her entire pregnancy, she gives birth to the Damascus goat. That's my headcanon at least, because I refuse to believe these things were ever allowed to exist. They're used for meat and milk in the Middle East, and one was apparently awarded the prize for the most beautiful goat in 2008. I assume the judges were fucking blind, deaf, stupid, and didn't even attend the competition. Must. Must is a periodic condition in male elephants where the hormones can spike to 140 times the normal amount and cause the animal to become highly aggressive. In the wild, the males in this state have been known to kill other members of a species, including their own children, and in captivity they've killed numerous keepers. It most often happens in winter, and signs of musts include waxy secretions from the glands beneath their eyes, drool from their mouths, as well as piss all over their fucking legs. I've seen this in the wild before, and it's pretty vile. The one male that I saw was moving his cock around, pissing all over himself, and at one point seemed like he was scratching himself with it. They also make a low growling sound that can be heard from a reasonable distance so that blind people know that they're about to be brutally murdered by a four-ton mammal. Leviathan. 
I owe a lot to this ancient whale. Because the video I made on it got over 8 million views and I gained like 80,000 followers from it. I literally went from 3,000 to 15,000 overnight. It was amazing. Leviathan was probably the deadliest whale to ever exist, having a diet of literally everything in the oceans at the time. They grew up to 17 and a half meters or 57 feet long and had the largest teeth of any known animal, just over the size of a ruler, which were used to rip off large chunks of flesh from its prey. They had the same ability as upstairs neighbors, being able to make noises so loud it would shut down the bodily functions of anything too close. This ability is known as autistic stunning and would have been very similar to intense submarine sonar we see today. Unsurprisingly, their closest to living relative is the cum whale, but the main difference between the two is that Leviathan has teeth on both jaws while the cum whale only has teeth on its bottom jaw. By the way, they probably ate megalodons as well. Clownfish are hermaphrodites. I heard that the team who made Finding Nemo did a fuck ton of research on marine life before making the movie. Well, they clearly didn't research enough because Marlin would have become a woman and fucked Nemo. Not so wholesome now. Clownfish have evolved a survival strategy known as sequential hermaphroditism, which means when the dominant breeding female dies, the dominant male can switch sexes and become the new breeding female, and this change is irreversible. Also, all clownfish are born male. Kawaii oh oh, last call. Moving on to something far more depressing, the video I'm about to show is of a male kawaii oh oh bird performing a mating call. What makes this video depressing is that he is actually the last of his species, calling out to a mating partner that will never come, which means he's going to be a virgin forever. Unlucky bro. Frogs can't vomit. Frogs are actually unable to vomit, which may seem like an advantage at house parties, but what they do instead is much more disgusting. They perform something known as gastric inversion, whereby the frog ejects its entire fucking stomach and wipes it clean with its front feet. The reason they can't throw up is because they don't have a diaphragm, which is a muscle that helps you throw up, and comes in extremely handy after downing a full bottle of beam on an empty stomach. Frog battery. If you still like frogs after that last fact, I recommend you skip this bit. Not only are frogs tortured by having to manually clean out their stomach contents, they've also been used to make batteries. Now, this was part of an experiment conducted way before animals were even considered to have rights and were barely considered to even be sentient beings. The aim of the experiment was to examine how electricity conducts through biological material and was performed with dead and living frogs. These batteries were known as biobatteries and were also performed with other animal parts like ox heads. Stronze Beast Remember when we talked about globsters earlier? Those giant masses of organic material? Well, this one had a name, and it's the Stronze Beast. It washed up on Scottish shores in 1808 and was determined to be a sea serpent that was actually just a decaying basking shark. Its measurements were recorded by two farmers who reported that it had paws and wings. Fuck, there really was nothing to do in the past, was there? Super Lamb Banana. The Super Lamb Banana is a perfect example of why art should be left to be made by actual artists. It was made as a comment on the potential dangers of genetic engineering by combining two of Liverpool's biggest imports, bananas and sheep, that commonly came in through the docks. Like, I understand art is subjective, but come on. Elephant dicks can move. I briefly mentioned this when talking about elephant must, but elephants can move their dicks surprisingly well, like a bendy human arm well. And they're strong too, with some sightings of elephants using them to remain steady on the ground. Sexual cannibalism. Sexual cannibalism is exactly how it sounds. Fucking hot. I mean, fucking horrifying. It's the process of when an animal, usually the female, eats the male after they fuck. This is common in a bunch of spiders and a few insects and crustaceans. There are a few potential reasons as to why this happened. First off, there's the fact that pregnant females will be fucking starving from having a bunch more mouths to feed, and the male is right there for the consumption. Alternatively, the male might compete with the female for food, so his death is necessary for her to survive. Another theory is that the females are so hyper-aggressive by nature towards their prey that they just forget to not murder their own species. There's also the option of selection, where the females eat males with undesirable traits. That's kind of like going on a dating show, and if you're unemployed and play League of Legends, a girl just fucking axe murders you and consumes your twitching corpse. Vacanti Mouse Back with more genetic engineering horrors, the Vacanti Mouse was a laboratory mouse that essentially had an ear growing out of its fucking back. It was made by implanting an ear-shaped cartilage structure into the mouse's skin. This experiment was undertaken in relation to organ regrowth via genetic engineering of other animals, and the scientist, Joseph Vacanti, stated that the rat lived a long and healthy life afterwards. This is despite the fact that it's protocol to kill mice after they've been tested on, and the paper written on the experiment stated that they killed it too. Obviously, this is gross and cruel to the poor rat, and I don't condone this kind of shit, but thankfully the scientific community doesn't either. The Bone Wars Although it sounds like a shitty Star Wars porn parody, The Bone Wars is actually a period of time where intense dinosaur fossil hunting took place and the story of the two people involved sounds like a shitty drama. Put shortly, the two dudes in the mid-1800s ruined their friendship, prioritizing their careers at different establishments over a bunch of dinosaur fossils, and basically held a pissing contest over who could collect and construct the most dinosaur fossils. There's a whole documentary about it called Dinosaur Wars that goes into way more detail if you're interested. Indian Purple Frog I want this thing dead. They genuinely might be the single ugliest animal on the fucking planet. I never want to see this thing again, and for my own and everyone else's well-being, I will never speak of this. Goblin Shark We've got more thalassophobia nightmares ahead. You have been warned. The goblin shark gets its name from its vile appearance. At least I assume so. They're a very rare species of deep sea shark, being found at depths of up to 1300 meters or 4200 feet underwater. I guess because they know what they look like and live in darkness so no one can see them. They hunt for their prey near the sea floor and have been known to eat garbage. They're also able to extend their jaws out significantly when capturing prey. This is considered to be a very primitive trait, which makes sense because it's the only living member of an otherwise extinct group of sharks. Gulper eel. 
I'm convinced that aliens came to Earth and just went straight to the bottom of the ocean. And what other evidence do you need than the gulper reel? These things have heads that can be a quarter of the total length of their bodies. They're transparent and don't have red blood cells as juveniles and can swallow prey much larger than themselves. They have a maximum length of around a meter or three feet and live three kilometers or almost 10,000 feet underwater. Also, deep sea trawlers fish these things up on a somewhat common occurrence, which must be awful. I got fired last week, you know. And instead of finding somewhere else to work, I'm creating terrible content for free. Isn't that nice? Fiji Mermaid. The Fiji mermaid was an object made up of the head of a juvenile monkey sewn to the body of a fish. It was supposedly caught in Fiji in the 1800s, and I think we know that's not fucking true. Also, if I researched correctly, a bunch of replicas were made of it, because it kept getting destroyed for some reason. Apophilation. Apophilation is the process of eating your own fucking penis, and sometimes someone else's, and is known to occur in several species of terrestrial slugs. Sometimes the penis gets stuck during sex, and I think we've all been there, but the slug solution is to just bite it off. You may think that means males only mate once, but nah, they just become females fated to have another penis stuck in them and thus continue the cycle. I always wonder how shit like this evolved. Like, there must have been some point in time where penis eating first occurred. Did it happen in several unrelated circumstances? Or did the first penis victim decide to become a woman out of spite and vow to eat another penis in a constant search for her missing appendage? Food for thought, but not your penis. Raw. Raw is a movie created by idiots. It's supposedly an adventure comedy film released in 1981, and the plot is nothing special at all. It's the production of the film where the room temperature IQ of the filmmakers shines through. They stumbled across a fuck ton of wild lions and tigers chilling in an abandoned shack and decided to use them as actors in the movie. And as you'd expect, the giant wild carnivores attacked people throughout the filming process, with some examples making it into the movie. You can actually see the actors kind of shit themselves, and it's kind of fucked up to watch, but definitely not boring. Overall, 70 people out of the total 140 workers were injured while making the film, with one actress actually being mauled by a lion and requiring plastic surgery and 50 stitches. It's not already obvious from things like natural self-preservation instincts. Do not fuck with big cats, especially wild ones. As clearly demonstrated, you will get dicked on. Real dinosaur noises. Every noise you've heard a dinosaur make in the movies is wrong. Don't get me fucking started. I mainly blame the Jurassic Park sound designers for creating these misconceptions, because instead of bothering to be accurate, they used sounds from tigers, koalas, donkeys, and elephants to create the classic roar. <laughs> And yes, I know they did this for dramatic effect, but no reptiles in the animal kingdom even sound close to that, with the closest possibly being an alligator growl. But given that dinosaurs are also closely related to birds, there have been theories that dinosaurs may have sounded like nightmare birds. And I'll make sure you shit your pants by showing you what I mean. Put simply, milt is just fish cum. Essentially male caviar, but more vile. They seemingly produce a fuck ton of it too, and people eat it and claim there's a slight sweetness to it. I guess fish love pineapple juice. Raccoons can fit in your ass. Consider this. Your asshole can stretch up to seven inches in diameter without taking significant damage. Also consider that a raccoon can fit in any gap four inches in diameter or wider. This means that you can fit almost two entire raccoons up your ass. Whore. Catch you the poodle. If you like dogs, skip this one, but I think the story is fucking hilarious in a sort of dark, morbid kind of way. In 1988, there was a dog named Kachi. Kachi lived in an apartment with his family, and on this fateful day, was playing catch with his best friend, a young boy. We'll call him Damo. Damo wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, but boy did he love his dog, and boy did Kachi love playing catch with his favorite ball. All seemed well between Damo and Kachi before the ball bounced out onto the balcony and off the railings, plummeting 13 stories into the streets below. Damo could only watch in horror as Kachi's dedication to catch the ball beat out his fear of death and the dog slipped off the balcony. Cut to a woman named Edith Sola, an elderly member of the Buenos Aires community, admiring a wonderful carpet in a storefront window. At the same time, a bus was driving down the peaceful street, gaining speed. A scream from the apartments above, Edith craned her neck to look, along with other passerbys who heard the cry, with one pedestrian stepping out onto the road. It all happened within a moment. A vain squeal of the bus brakes followed by an ugly thump, screams, the arrival of the ball onto the pavement, and the immediate death of both Kachi and Edith upon colliding with each other after the dog fell from 13 stories. And as if to add insult to injury, a man walked out of a pharmacy to see this horrific scene and promptly went into cardiac arrest, thus making the death toll of this innocent game of fetch three from a fucking poodle. Leatherback sea turtle teeth. Leatherback sea turtle teeth are awful. I don't need to explain why, you can just look at them. There is a purpose to this matter, however, as the shape and angle of the teeth help to keep slippery prey that it eats from escaping its jaws. Can't imagine they'd give good sloppy, though. Pasilolinic sympathetic compass. The Pasilolinic sympathetic compass was a contraption built to prove a pseudo-hypothesis that snails create a permanent telepathic link when they mate. As you can probably guess, this experiment was done in the mid-1800s, where the internet didn't exist, and I guess this is what people did in spare time. I don't think I need to tell you that this went nowhere and was a complete waste of everyone's time. Vampire bat. Vampire bats are exactly as they sound. They're vampires, feeding off the blood of other animals. There are currently three species that live in Central and South America, but unfortunately none of them are as hot as Mavis from Hotel Transylvania. Amazonian giant centipede. 
The Amazonian giant centipede is the largest centipede species in the world, growing to lengths of over 30 centimeters or 12 inches long. They're found throughout South America and some parts of the Caribbean. They've been known to eat anything from insects to bats, and there's even a report of the death of a four-year-old when one hid inside a soft drink can. Or, for the Americans... Soda! Paku fish. Paku fish are a species of fish native to South America and are related to piranhas. The main difference between these two is the paku fish stole your grandma's dentures. Yeah, I'll, I'll move on. Pyrosomes. Pyrosomes are free-floating masses that are made up of millions of tiny organisms called zooids. These things can grow up to 18 meters or 60 feet long and be big enough for humans to swim through. They're a type of organism called a colonial organism. No, not that. And there are a bunch of different types, with a common example being coral. Red-lipped batfish. Potentially the angriest living thing I've ever seen, the red-lipped batfish can't do anything right, except for his makeup of course, but what sane person over 30 still wears bright lipstick? They're shaped more like a deformed bird than a fish, and I just realized I don't want to keep talking about this. Quetzalcoatlus. The Quetzalcoatlus is probably the scariest thing to ever exist. They were giant flying beasts that grew as tall as giraffes and ate pretty much anything that could fit inside their mouths. They had wingspans of up to 12 meters or 39 feet. Now, this thing was so heavy, there were actual debates on whether or not it was flightless, but Quetzalcoatlus, of course, found a way to fly at speeds of 130 kilometers or 80 miles an hour and could cover distances of 19,000 kilometers or 12,000 miles in a single flight at heights of 4,600 meters or 15,000 feet. This means that they can consistently fly for upwards of a week. There's also evidence to suggest that they could run pretty fast to catch prey on the fucking ground. And you're probably thinking, man, Man, this thing would have been great at bombing orphanages and innocent children. And if you are, you should definitely drop that idea, because the military industrial complex already beat you to it by making a drone based off it. Lead Sichthus Problematicus. Lead Sichthus is one of the biggest bony fish to have ever existed, being able to grow up to 16.5 meters or 54 feet long. Fish of this size usually have skeletons made of cartilage because it's lighter and means you don't have to eat as much to survive. Just look at shit like the Megalodon or the whale shark. This means Lead Sichthus had to constantly be eating, and swam with its fat ass mouth being held open, hoping dumb cunt fish swim into it. Which, of course, means as soon as this food wasn't available, they all fucking died. Black Swallower. Along with being my nickname in middle school, the black swallower is a deep sea species of fish that constantly looks like it's pregnant. It has a seemingly common ability of underwater demons, being able to eat things much bigger than itself, up to two times the length and ten times its mass. And to make it worse, it's theorized that it bites the tail of its prey and walks its jaws slowly along the rest of its body. Given that it lives 2700 meters or 9000 feet underwater, collection of specimens is difficult, except for when the fish eats something so big that it starts to decompose before it's fully digested, creating a gas buildup in the fish that causes it to float to the surface where it dies and awaits collection. Entelodon. Entelodon is an extinct species of pig-like beast that died out around 19 million years ago and was native to Eurasia. They could grow to be the height of a human and weigh almost a ton. There's nothing super special about them other than the fact that they had giant heads with three pairs of incisors for absolutely decimating their prey. Basically a much bigger version of wild boars we see today. It looks like something out of Annihilation. This tier isn't for the faint of heart. We've got everything from disturbing experiments and animal abuse to trypophobia, or the fear of small holes. Don't worry though, it only gets worse from here. Mary the Elephant, and Topsy the Elephant. Content warning for animal abuse. I'll combine these two because they're essentially the same thing. Mary and Topsy were both elephants that were executed in the early 1900s. Mary was hung for killing a circus employee and Topsy was electrocuted and the reasoning for it is unclear. Mary's honestly goaded for killing the circus employee as even today, animals forced to perform in circus acts are horribly mistreated and I can't imagine how much worse it would have been in 1916. And Topsy was supposedly killed by Thomas Edison. Some sources say that it's because the elephant was unpredictable and some say because Edison wanted to prove a point. Either way, it's fucked. Suriname toad birth. This is the trypophobia I was talking about. Suriname toads give birth through small holes in their back and it looks gross. I'm not giving this one much attention because it's foul. Tongue eating louse. The tongue eating louse is a species of parasitic isopod that cuts off the circulation to a fish's tongue and effectively replaces it. While this is pretty gross, that's about as far as it goes and it doesn't affect the fish's life that much after, you know, the tongue removal. Bees boil intruders. Bees have a very interesting torture method for any intruders that try and invade their hive. Boiling their intruders alive is most commonly seen against bees' arch enemies, hornets. The bees will latch onto the hornet and vibrate their bodies to create heat and essentially boil the intruder alive, all while stinging and biting the invader. It's surprisingly effective and has also been seen against other animals like mice. Yeah. You're gonna be quiet, I'm recording. Yeah. Pacific Black Dragon. The Pacific Black Dragon is the final boss of underwater monstrosities. It even comes equipped with one of those musketeer beard things. They grow up to 60 centimeters or 2 feet in length and are an ambush predator. They feed on bioluminescent or glow-in-the-dark prey and their bodies are lined with dark tissue to hide the glowing bodies once eaten. Interestingly, the females are extremely different from the males and all the typical features of the Pacific Black Dragon are absent in the males who barely leave the larval stage and only live long enough to mate. Every photo of this thing looks like concept art for the alien movies and they're actually so darkly colored that photos of them are extremely difficult to take, similar to anti-paparazzi clothing. Filaro. The Philaro is straight out of Subnautica. It's a species of sea slug that swims like a fish. They're extremely transparent and super cool looking, and we don't really know anything about them. Probably because they're near impossible to find. Geoduck. 
A geoduck is a species of a clam that looks like an old man's penis, down to the fucking wrinkles and the black cum at the end. Apparently the shaft of this thing can go up to two meters long, and geoducks are apparently a delicacy in China. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic had significant impacts on the geoduck industry, and had major impacts on the global economy, to which it will never recover. Traumatic insemination. Traumatic insemination is the process of fucking so hard you pierce into the body wall and come straight into the bloodstream and is common in bugs. It basically allows the male to ensure that their semen will be the one that fertilizes the female's eggs, but it's also detrimental to the female's health. Remember, people don't want tea jammed into their bloodstream non-consensually. Proboscis worm. Proboscis worms look like dicks. That's the only reason I put them here. Fuck, I'm mature. Pit of despair. Animal abuse warning. This one's particularly deplorable. I refuse to go into detail for this one, but basically some scientist in 1970 became depressed after his wife died and decided to test whether or not monkeys could become depressed as well. And to test this, he separated bonded pairs of monkeys at a young age and put them into small pits that they couldn't escape from. Thankfully, the entire scientific community condemned the disgusting experiment and it didn't even prove anything we couldn't already assume. Big eye, very spooky. Bestiality. Needs no introduction. I don't know why people do this. Cambrian aliens. This refers to the theory that the animals in the Cambrian period, also known as the first complex life to ever exist, were actually aliens that came to Earth to live here. There's also the theory that octopus are aliens because of how bizarre and different their biology is when compared to other animals that exist. But as a counter theory, octopi don't fossilize, so it's hard to trace any lineage to see how they would have evolved. Jurassic World Dominion. An absolutely feral abomination of a movie. I plan to make a full review of it later on, but I might not survive the rewatching and writing process. While I have seen objectively worse movies in my life, I don't think I've ever hated a movie on a personal level as much as I hated Dominion. And I don't even have a connection to the original Jurassic Park movies. A lot of my hatred comes from the people who are obsessed with it and constantly defend the franchise when I say the dinosaurs presented are inaccurate because they plague my comment sections with mindless arguments amongst each other. I swear, there are people who like the first two Jurassic World movies who don't like this one, meaning it takes real dedication to love and defend this movie. And obviously I'm not saying you can't enjoy this movie because there are enough angry commenters to prove that you can. It's just that I became irrationally angry about the movie when I saw it, and rage bait is really good for TikTok engagement. Of course this isn't actually a disturbing fact, but I felt the end of this list would be a bit too serious and I wanted some levity. Overtone Bridge Overtone Bridge is a bridge in Scotland that's known for numerous reports of dogs jumping off it. Not always to their own deaths, but it's never good. This strange phenomena supposedly has something to do with the scent of mink, pine martens, and other animal smells that agitate the dogs. But I don't think I've ever been so pissed that I try and attack the ground 30 meters below me. But I also don't know what mink and pine martens smell like, so you never know. Auto cannibalism. Auto cannibalism is when animals eat themselves. A common example is with snakes smelling prey in their own bodies and attempting to swallow themselves. And many mammals actually eat their own placentas after giving birth. And that concludes the ultimate animal facts iceberg. It got a little bit dark towards the end there, but I hope all three of you watching made it through all right. I actually didn't think this video would be longer than my Jurassic World review, but here we are. Be sure to let me know if you like this longer form content and what you want to see me talk about next, as well as anything you think I should have added in some of these tiers. Also be sure to relentlessly abuse and harass me of any facts that I got wrong. I sincerely ask that you do not like this video or subscribe, as I want to remain as unsuccessful as humanly possible and die tragically young. If you did stick to the end, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Oh yeah, thanks for like 700 subs by the way. What the fuck? Me